Joining me now, a good buddy of mine, Josh Kwiatkowski, taking on Blake Sigvaldson. I guess he's a buddy of your teammate. <laughs> uh, pretty stylistically good matchup. Uh, you were originally intended to fight David Moon at Rise FC6 before it got canceled. Uh, talk about the layoff itself, man, because you haven't fought since 2019, dude. Yeah. Um, the layoff's been just so stressful, so frustrating um, for people like myself that need fighting to, you know, uh, vent some energy, uh, to say the least. I've been pretty bottled up <laughs> for the last year. <laughs> and uh, I've had, like, almost a couple opportunities in uh, America. A couple fights fell through, a couple last-minute opportunities. And it's just, like, fights that made no sense. And I've just been chomping at the bit, and, and I've just been training and training and training. And it feels like I've been in a camp for a year right now. And and finally, you know, yeah, it's going to happen. So I'm so stoked. Well, basically, you have been in a camp for a year because the, the bout against David Moon that was supposed to happen at Rise FC6 was scheduled for, you know, June of last year. And you've been in camp since then. So your last fight, as I said, Rise FC5 2019. Knockout victory over Randy Mahone. Big victory. Three fight win streak. Uh, just talk about your mindset going into this because I know uh, leading up to that fight, you really wanted to get the stoppage. You, you've you've done what you've had to do coming into those fights. You had a decision prior to that, but you had that big 16 second knockout and then almost knocked yourself out, you know, uh, <laughs> against the cage. But <laughs> um, just talk about mindset coming out of that three-fight win streak because you you look like judging by your social media that you've changed not only as a fighter and, and upgraded your game, but also a, as a whole person inside the cage, man. It's uh, this whole year, um, I got to thank a lot of people for kind of like that metamorphosis of my – fight career and like as i said like covid and 2020 i don't even think it's 2021 yet because you canceled <laughs> new year's so it's 2020 <laughs> still but uh 2020 sucked and it sucked for so many different reasons but the only thing that was uh positive for me in this last year is my fighting is on point my my overall um discipline to the sport and just being professional like i haven't stayed in such good fight shape uh preparing for a fight ever this i've never been i when people say you know stay ready and i i even thought that i stayed ready before you know because i thought i was in good shape and i would only have to lose a little bit of weight before a fight like i'm in <laughs> i'm ready i could fight tomorrow i could fight i could have fought last weekend i could have fought the weekend before then i've been ready i'm staying ready and and my coaches have just been grinding and kind of we're filling these holes in my game and and I think it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be tough for people to to find a place where they want to bring the fight. You're a guy who always wants to get in the cage. You're a guy who's known for you know his scrappy tenacity. Uh, what can people be most surprised about by this upgraded version of Josh Kwiatkowski? Well, uh, the old me would probably uh, do some crazy shit, and <laughs> the new me is still gonna do some crazy shit. But that being said. Um, you got to be calculated. And all I know is I have faith that if I punch someone in the head, they're going to start acting weird and fall over. And all I have to do is touch someone. And I've proven it time and time again, that if I touch someone enough, they're going to fall down and the fight will be over. And everything with my martial arts is involving forcing my opponent to feel pain, to feel that pressure, and then just to slowly break. Uh, I don't have to force a finish. Finishes will come with me being the fighter I am. And uh, sometimes I feel like there's a pressure to excite people. And um, I never want to be in a boring fight, but I can't let the fear of what other people think affect how I fight. And I haven't been in a boring fight, so I don't think it's going to be an issue for me. But um, I just don't want to force a finish. I just want to go in there, have fun not be too excited that it's been like over 400 days since I stepped in the cage, <laughs> but uh, I can't let that energy, that emotion take the best of me. 
I'm just going to go in there, be calculated, and and uh, get the finish. I got to ask you, uh, you fought four times in, in 2019. The, the lone loss was against George Alcala, uh, a guy who utilized his wrestling, pushed you up against the cage, pulled your legs out from under you. You know, you worked to get back to the feet. Uh, Blake's known for his wrestling abilities too. So how have you prepared a little better for that in comparison to the George fight? Um, with the George fight, it's, uh, from all my fights, the George fight is the fight I've learned the most from. And, and even though I lost, uh, that adversity of being taken down by a high level wrestler and having to get up and, and, and that's the, the matchup that uh the stylistic matchup against a striker that you don't want to face you know but vice versa like when i go against a grappler that i know wants to take me down well every time we're we're standing i know that you know his heart's going a little bit more so ever since the george uh fight me and my coaches have been tweaking and working and and adding to my arsenal so that if i'm put in those positions again i'm not worried i'm not uh, I'm not getting held down. I'm I'm getting up. I'm I'm threatening from my back. I'm uh, I'm able to uh, not panic and just uh, deal with it because this is MMA. At the end of the day, if I could go in there and I could just punch someone in the face, that'd be fantastic. But it's not. It's MMA. So there's gonna be wrestling, cage fighting, jujitsu, uh, kickboxing. So many different variables that can make or break a fight. But this last year I'm filling those holes and, and though I I'm known as a striker and people know that I got some heavy hands, uh, people are going to be surprised that I'm getting better everywhere. And, uh, it's been a year of me working and working. So it's, it's time to show people what I've been doing. You said right off the hop that you had a few people you, you have to thank for the growth uh, of yourself as a mixed martial artist. Who are some of those people? Well, um, during this COVID uh, time, I know the whole world's been weird. And I know that everyone has gyms that they train with and they all have a home base and, and, and people they trust. And during this COVID time, some people didn't get to train. Some people didn't have facilities. Like the world was weird, right? Fortunately for me, I have a home, home facility and uh, I have a home. I have a roommate who's a professional fighter, Keenan Keller. And uh, my best friend, Micah, he uh, basically we had a private black belt for the first like six months of, of quarantine. And we just had small classes, small trainings, safe, small trainings. And uh, at the end of the day, we just we just grinded. And, 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 and our friends, we, we knew we couldn't take a break. We can't. And, and so for everyone that's been grinding behind closed doors uh, with me for this last year and just helping me not take that break and helping me develop in this time where if we're not going to be fighting, if we're not going to be competing as Canadians, we need to be at least adding to our skills because in America, they've been having fights all the time and they get that experience from competition, which us Canadians haven't been getting, but I'm, I've added a shit ton of skills and I hope a lot of us other Canadians have done the same because at the end of the day, I'm, we got to get some more Canadians in the show doing doing good at the UFC, and that's all that matters. So, hundred percent. Not only your your skill set inside the cage, I think, has grown, but uh, judging by some of the pictures you've posted, your physique and, and your overall conditioning has has gone through the roof. I mean, you're working on strength and conditioning more than ever, and it looks like nutrition as well. So, just talk about that a little bit. My uh, my strength and conditioning coach is is amazing, Garrett Johnson. Um, he also does my uh, meal prep. So the only, for all my fights for, I guess, the last three, four years, I've been um, doing like the last month or three or four weeks of the fight camp, whole, uh, all whole cuisine, all, all meal prep from my strength coach. And after the last uh, fight there in, uh, against Randy Mahone, we didn't have the most professional or, or ideal um weight cut for a multitude of reasons um so we knew that going into this next fight um a proper weight cut proper diet and and uh overall health was needed to be focused on 
and me and Garrett, uh, I've been doing all my meal prep through him and I'm walking around like 11, 12 pounds lighter than I normally am. Um, I'm lean as all hell. My energy levels feel amazing. And besides all my coaches, like that's the only real giant change I've made is full-time meal prep. And it's, it's been awesome. Amazing, man. I don't want to take up too much more of your time here, but I want you to, you know, thank the sponsors that you have. Uh, let people know what they can look forward to this Saturday night at Rise FC 6 when you step inside the cage. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I fight for uh, myself, making myself and, and, and the pride of my family's name. Uh, so I'm going to put on for my family. I love you all. Thank you for supporting me this last year. But my coach is Dan Golkar, Sean Albrecht. You guys are amazing. I I can't say enough. Garrett Johnson, whole cuisine. Um, and then the doctors that keep me in, in one or two pieces. Catalyst at Edmonds. Dr. Berghammer, you're the man. Um, Strike Recovery. Ali, Bernard, Malcolm, everyone out there, you're the best. Thank you so much. Um, and then, and that's about it. Um, Keenan Keller, you got a big fight coming up too. My roommate, he's been really uh, helping push me. Um, you know, he's a, he's like my little brother sometimes, a little annoying. I want to beat him up, but uh, <laughs> um, he's been a good driving force. And then Micah Brakefield, obviously, is like my therapist and mentor, spirit animal. Uh, and then Clay Davison was a big help this fight camp too as well. So thank you to all you guys. Love you all. You can see Josh fight Blake Sigvelson this Saturday, March 13th, Rise FC6. It's First a... round KO. Let's go. I <laughs> forgot. Come on. Let's go. It's an online pay-per-view. You can you can find it on the Imagine BC app. It's like $4.20. So Woo! why not watch it? And Josh, obviously, we're going to have to have some donuts post-fight because I can't make oh, it out to the island. Let's do it. Dolphins. All right, buddy. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. i already. <laughs> Bye.